Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for being here and spending time with me. I kind of want to hop into it because we're going to be using the Purple Rosenthal book today. Make sure you grab this bad boy. <laughs> and then uh, we're going to do an in-depth review of counseling and helping relationships. But the goal is not to go over the um, 200 questions that's in the book. The goal is to do a review of maybe like 20 or so questions and just go through it thoroughly and pretend like you're in a tutoring session with me one-on-one -on -one and you are taking this time out to study. Wherever you are, you are taking accountability. You are pressing start. You are replaying it. You know, if you like this video, you comment, whatever you need to do, that's perfectly, perfectly fine. But I want you to use this time to study for you. You got this. And just let's get started, shall we? All right, so here we are. So the first question in this book for Counseling Help and Relationship talks about Sigma Freud. Sigma Freud is the father of psychoanalysis, which is both a form of treatment and a very comprehensive personality theory. According to Freud's theory, inborn drives mainly sexual, which help from the personality. Blank and Blank, who originally worked with Freud, created individual psychology and analytic psychology, respectfully. So, through all that stuff in the beginning, and the last part is what we're really concerned about is the Blank and Blank, and we're looking for those the, the, those theories who did one who did individual psychology and one who did analytic psychology. So, we're gonna look at our options here. We're just gonna go through process of elimination. Now, could it be called John and Alfred Adler? Say definite possibility for sure. It's A and B are flipped back and forth. They're not in order, but you want to make sure that you have the person who created individual psychology first and the other individuals analytical um, psychology. So we're going to come back to A and B. So let's look at Joseph Bureau and A. A. Brew. A. A. Brew is a career theorist for sure. So guess what? Even if I didn't know who Joseph Bureau was, I'm able to identify that A.A. Brill is a career theorist, so C has to be wrong. So D has Alfred Adler and Roland May. We know Roland May is logotherapy in the sense of essentialism um, and talks about, you know, finding the meaning and purpose to exist, which is not the thing of analytical or individual psychology. All right, so let's get back to A and B, okay? So if we're looking at who goes first, do we know Carl Jung to be uh, the father of individual psychology? No, right? So Alfred Adler was the father of individual psychology, right? Carl Jung is the is the individual analytic psychology, okay? Um, and so you just want to make sure you know the theorists with their modality of where they're teaching from. So once again, Alfred Adler, he is the individual psychology and Carl Jung is analytical. All right. All right, number two, Eric Burns transactionalizes, posits, or just indicates three ego states, a child, adult, and parent. These roughly correspond to Freud's structural theory that includes. So Eric Burns, he indicates that we talk to each other in a certain way, okay? Whether we talk to each other, or I'm talking to you right now, I can talk to you from a child or adult or parent perspective. Um, and it also can be harming how I'm talking to you based on either one of those areas, okay? So for a child, I'm thinking childlike, you know, not really truly understanding everything, but I'm coming from the place of a child. A parent is the adoptive thoughts that you have adopted um, while growing up from your parents. And then the adult is what you've learned um, as an adult and you have kind of like your own um, individual view. So when we're looking at... Um, in comparison to how can we relate that to Freud's structural theory, 
If you're looking at child, adult, and parent, which one is these are similar? Okay. Will it be oral, anal, or phallic? Does that relate to like uh, the child, adult, and parent? I would say no. That's the psychosexual stages, right? If we are thinking about the unconscious, pre-conscious, and conscious, could be. And then we have C, which is A and B, okay? And then we have D, the id, ego, and superego. So if you had to choose which one, which one would it be? I'll give you a second to think about it. All right, so it's going to be D. And let me tell you why. So it's going to be D because the id is like the kid, right? The child, right? Um, and if you think about it, the ego, the ego is similar to the um, parent and the super ego is more so, like I said, the parent and the ego is more so of uh, the adult, right? In transactional analysis, which is TA, the conscious or ego state concerned with moral behavior, we just talked about this, is which one, which theory is it in? Now, we just talked about this, about Morally, so you tell me which one you think it is. Okay, if we, for example, we're looking at the parent, um, and we're looking at the conscious of ego state, um, of moral behavior, we get that from like our parent, right? So we know it's going to be, um, a parent, right? Um, it's similar to uh, for its super ego. So we already know it's going to be this one. Why? Because when we look at our parents, we are told what's morally right and what's morally not right. And then the same thing with Sigurd Freud's uh, topographical construct of the mind, where he talks about the id, ego and super ego. The super ego is morality as well. The the understanding between right and wrong. Boy felt that successful resolution of the Oedipus complex led to the development of the superego. This is accomplished by identification with the aggressor and um, the same parent of the same sex, analysis during childhood years, identification with the parent of the opposite sex, and transference. I already know we're not talking about transference, anything coming from a client of feelings that's, that's put onto a therapist. So we're gonna scratch out D. So what we do know from complex, which is also known as the phallic, is that that is when the child, so the, for example, a son will have aggressive behaviors towards a father while having sexual, like, sexual needs and wants from the opposite parent, which is the mom. So, What's being asked here is how can we look at this as we grow from the Oedipus, which is also the phallic, onto latency, which is the next stage in Eric, um, I said Eric Erickson, let me get, mm -mm. and <laughs> Sigma Freud's psychosexual stages, right? Because you have oral, anal, phallic, latency, and genital. So how can one person, a child, move from being aggressive towards the father and sexually wanting the mother. Well, is that done through identification with the parent of the opposite sex, the aggressor? Well, no, because the person will have the sexual aggression towards the same sex. So the boy will have the aggressive thinking towards the father. So it wouldn't be the opposite sex. So we're gonna cross out C. Analysis during childhood, I mean, quite possibly, but according to Sigma Freud, we have to we have to identify with the aggressor of the parent of the same sex because we have to be like, you know what, Dad, me wanting my mom is completely ridiculous, and me being aggressive towards you is pretty ridiculous as well. I see you as a role model, 
me and you both are male and we both can, you know, I can role model from you pretty much, right? Like, why are we even competing? So we're going to go with A. And then also, too, once a child moves from the Oedipus complex, which is also known as the phallic stage, they're going to go into latency. And latency is where they don't have any of that sexual aggression at all. They're just hanging around with peers within their own age and showing interest in those social groups and activities. Okay. And then genital is when they actually do start to have those sexual urges, masturbation, having sexual intercourse. But that is, has nothing to do with the parents at all. Okay. That's with individuals around their same age, et cetera. Right. Forty is referred to ego as the executive administrator of the personality and the reality principle, the guardian angel of the mind, <laughs> the pleasure principle, the seat of the libido. Okay. Now, which one can we rule out already that we know that has not been mentioned in Freud's work? And if you chose B, you are right. The guardian angel of the mind, the ego. Mm -mm. All right. Pleasure principle. Present principle is the id. So let's talk about it real quick. So if you look at, like, use your head an example, right? The id is in the back of the head. This is the most primitive, innate want. I want it now. I, need, I don't care about the consequences. I need what I want. Who cares? So, example, I've used this plenty of times. If I want ice cream and the id, which is my innate that has been with me since born. So my instinct is um, just the span of time has been there forever. Um, primitive is what the word I'm looking to, very primitive. And if I want ice cream, I might take it from a kid because I'm thinking from my id, right? I don't care about the consequences. But the super ego, which could be here on the top of your head, the super ego talks about what's morally right and wrong. So if the, the the super ego is like, uh-uh, we can't do that. That's not morally acceptable. Uh, that's not going to work. The ego, which is in the front, and it's answer the questions here, um, answer the question here, it's in the front, it's what decision-making area is. The, the goal of the ego is to balance out the needs of the id and the super ego. And then the ego will have the final say and actually do, do the action that is in the in the thought process. So in this part of the ice cream and the it wanted it and the, the uh, super ego wanted to be morally right, the way of getting the ice cream, then the ego can be like, well, this, let's just buy the ice cream. Satisfy the id and the moral, the super ego, the moral in that area all at the same time. And so it's going to be A, <laughs> the executive executive administrator of the personality and reality principle because the ego is in reality it's in the conscious mind the id is in complete unconscious right and then also too you have the super ego which is in both right is in the unconscious and the conscious okay the ego is aware of all of these things um that's going okay and I was just talking to the person I was tutoring today where if you ever heard of the Freudian slip, right? Um, and it refers to the id, okay? Because have you ever had a situation or you've heard someone say, oh my God, that dress is ugly or just something really negative you never thought someone would say and they will deeply apologize and they're crying. I didn't know. I don't know what happened. That's the Freudian slip. Because at that point in time, when that person said whatever they said, for coming from the id in this case, didn't care about the consequences at the time. So that's what's called a Freudian slip. Okay. A um, little bit of side notes. All right. So let's pick A. All right. Forest theory speak of Eros and Thetos. A client who threatens a self destructive act is being ruled primarily by. Keyword uh, threatens. A self-destructive act. This is a negative thing. Um, and some people I know, 
and I've talked to as well during tutoring sessions, were able to link the answer to Marvel comic book series. If you ever, or even the movies, the shows. So if you know anything about Thanos, is Thanos a good person? He's typically the most worst person in the world. He's trying to have destruction and he's death. That's it. Destruction and death. So you're going to pick Thanos because that's what that means. And arrows, which is the, the complete opposite, is love and life. Okay. The it is present at birth, right? Primitive. We talked about that earlier. This is in the back of the head. This is what we're born with. It never, never, never matures. It's always, it's always going to be there, okay? So I'm pretty much sigma for it thinks that our mind is pretty much we're balancing thoughts all the time. And I can actually kind of reason to that because I'll be balancing decisions we're making, you know, spending my money all the time. But anyway, so the it is present at birth and never matures. It operates mainly out of the awareness to satisfy essential need according to the, which one? We just talked about this. Not the reality principle. Not talking about transparency. We're not talking about love and life. We're talking about the pleasure principle. The it is the pleasure principle of the mind, right? All right, let's go to the next one here. Okay. If you think of the mind as a seesaw, the fulcrum or balancing apparatus, you can think of like, you know, weighing two things, um, the, the, the balancing scale, the legal scale. This would be, which one of these answers? So remember, we talked about this earlier about the balancing of the mind, according to Sigma for it. Is it the it? Mm, which has no concept of rationality or time? No, because it doesn't care. It never matures, right? So we don't even have to worry about that. Now, is it the superego? No, because that doesn't balance out the mind. That just says we need to do something that's morally correct. Basic, basic it is for drug addiction, so we're not talking about that right now. But so we're going to go to ego because ego is what balances out the needs of the it and the superego. A therapist who says to a patient, say whatever comes to mind is practicing what, right? Directive counseling? No. The, the therapist is not directing the counseling session. If anything, the therapist is letting the client run the session, right? So then we have TA, which is transactional analysis. We talked about Eric Byrne, um, and he talks about how we talk to each other. So we're not talking about that right now. Paraphrasing. No, there is no paraphrasing, no summarizing anything that's going on with the therapist and the individual. So we're going to go with free association. Free means free to associate whatever feelings or how you want to talk or what do you want to talk about into the session. So we're going to go with free association. Okay. The super ego contains the ego ideal. The super ego strives for blank rather than blank like the id. Okay. Now, if we know about the super ego, we're gonna go with which one? I'll give you some time. You're probably looking for morals, and you probably would pick this one, but it's a little tricky because. You're looking at the id. Is the id a part of ethics? If anything, it's the opposite, right? It doesn't care about that. So we're not going to go with C. So now, if we don't even understand the first blank, we can go to the one that says id, because we know that's the what? The primitive, the one that we're born with at birth, the one that I want now, I don't care about the consequences, okay? So the only one that has pleasure as the second option is here. So. We're going to click it, and it's going to be right. Super ego wants things to be perfect in, in regards to getting what it wants, but 
but doing it with a moral compass. Okay. Okay. All of these theories could be associated with an, the analytical movement, right? So we're looking at all the analytical theorists. We're just trying to figure out who don't belong here. Okay, we definitely know Freud does, Paul Jung does, and Alfred Adler. These are all sort of analytical theorists. Um, the only person that does not belong here is Joseph Wolf, and Wolf talks about um, like he used uh, he talked about phobia can be learned pretty much. And that um, phobia is can be measured through the set scale through desensitization. Okay, we'll talk more about that if, if we come along to that. Most scholars would assert that Freud's 1900 work entitled "The Interpretation of Dreams" was his most inf influential work. Dreams have what? Okay. Um, let's rule out some first, just through the process of elimination. So, no, it's not super ego and eggs. We're not even talking about the construct of the mind. We're talking about dreams and interpretation, right? Um, the id of the ego, similar to similar to these. We're not talking about that. Um, when it comes to preconscious and unconscious factors, we're not talking about the factors of those two areas. And so, it's going to be manifest and latent content. Okay, because you're thinking about dreams, how they manifest in your dreams, how it's late in content, meaning just trying to figure out like what these dreams mean. They're telling us something. Okay. Right. When a client projects feelings towards a therapist that he or she originally had towards a significant other, it's called what? Now, we know it's not free association because we're not telling the client, say whatever you want, say whatever comes to mind. We're not doing that. Insight is someone to have that aha moment, like to have the epiphany. Oh, wow, that I just had a thought that meant, you know, I solved something like, you know, some kind of impersonal growth. Transference. Yes, it's transference. Um, if you wanted to differentiate between counter transference and transference, if you think about Counseling, and you think about counter-transference, they both have a C-O-U-N, and you can remember that that stands for the counselor's position more so than the client. But the opposite is transference, where the client is projecting their feelings onto the therapist. Okay, so it's going to be transference. Okay. So, which case is not associated with the psychodynamic movement, okay? Psychodynamic movement. All right, so we have little Han, little Albert, and O, and Schruber. Um, so similar to Joseph Wolf, we just talked about his experiment where he said social, he said phobias can be learned, right? What he did in his experiment is that he used um, a white mouse, he used a rabbit, and he introduced a little boy, I think, I don't remember how old he was, he's quite young, maybe like five, um, and he introduced, I think he was actually younger than that, but what he did was, in his experiment, he gave the child the bunny or the mouse to play with, and then later on, he, whenever he introduced the animals to the child, he would make a loud noise, and the child would jump. So he would do that when he would bring out the pets that he was, you know, used to liking before. And now all of a sudden he developed a phobia because of the loud noise associated with those animals. Okay. So it's going to be little Albert. That was a little boy's name um, that he that he used um, in that experiment. Okay. So um John B. Watson was the person who did the experiment. And then Joseph Wolf talks about desensitization of that. Of like any kind of anxieties or phobias. Okay. Oh, he was 11 month old. So 11 month old boy named Abba to be afraid of furry objects. Okay. So 
think of John B. Watson, you think of um, the white animals that he used in his experiments. And if you think of Joseph Wolf, Joseph Wolf talked about the um, desensitization, he created that, and he talked about the sun scale. So those things are similar together. In contrast with classical psychoanalysis, psychodynamic counseling or therapy, utilize a few sessions per week, does not utilize a couch, is performed face to face, or all the above. Okay. Um, when you think of psychoanalysis, um, you should think about all the above. Okay. Um, so let's click on it. Let me just talk a little bit about it. Okay. So clinical, classical psychoanalysis is quite lengthy, three to five sessions per week for several years, not unusual, and very, very much expensive. Um, a complete analysis could cost over $100,000 in some parts of the nation, and virtually no form of insurance or managed care will pay for this type of treatment. Psychodynamic therapy and counseling make use of an analytic principles, but really on but rely on fewer sessions per week to make it a bit more practical. Okay, so not a lot of people use this because insurance is not going to cover it, and it's very very much expensive. You're paying out of pocket, and there is no measuring tool for that, as far as the progress that you're making, in order to determine if it's actually helping you in therapy. Okay. Um, talking about difficulties in order to purge emotions and feelings is a curative process known as if I am purging, meaning I am letting go, I am releasing, right? Sometimes it can help to just do like a synonym of the words and questions so you can get a different kind of view of how that word will, you know, make a sense as a keyword and try to find the answer. So. We're going to start with reflection of emotional content. No, this person is not reflecting. They're actually doing something. They're releasing. They're not reflecting on the fact that they release, but they're releasing. Accurate empathy. There is nothing said about being empathetic at all. Resistant is the opposite of purge, right? When you're purging, you're letting go. Resistant is you're holding on to, okay? So it's going to be catharsis and apparition. I always say that word a little weird. Um, and this just means to purge emotions and feelings. Okay. Id ego, super ego is the structural theory as blank is to topographical theory. Okay. Now, I talked a little bit about the topographical in the beginning. Um, and this is just the ice glacier that Sigma Freud used um, to explain the construct of the mind. And we're going to go with which one you think. Yeah, unconscious and preconscious. So we talked about the it being in the unconscious, right? So we talked about the superego being in both the unconscious and conscious. Um, the pre-conscious, if you don't know, um, is when you have a thought and it's it's not there. You can't remember. Maybe you had a song in your mind. Like, oh, my God, that song is on the tip of my tongue. But later on, you might remember it. That's pre-conscious. It's information that is still accessible, but it takes a little bit of time to get to. So if you're trying to remember something you had from last night, it might take you a while to remember, but it's accessible because it's in the pre-conscious and it can come to the conscious state of mind. Okay. Um, the most controversial aspect of Freud's theory is what? So we are looking at the psychosexual theories. It wouldn't be catharsis because he just said that means to release and purge emotions and feelings. Um, Oedipus complex, possibly, yep. Yeah. The notion of the pre-conscious mind. Mm, was that something that was no the interpretation of dreams we are now talking about dream interpretation here so the Oedipus complex the stephotic stage where for example the boy is um 
infatuated sexually to the opposite sex, which is his mom, and he has aggression towards the dad. For boys, it's called castration anxiety with this Oedipus complex, and then Electra for girls. Okay. Um, evidence for unconscious mind come from all of these except, okay, except, keyword, except. So when you're taking the NCE, you're not going to have, like, except all, um, always, any kind of thing that's definite. No, okay. Um, but in this case, we're just looking at, um, just to get an understanding and just to get comfortable with answering these kind of questions, even though it's except it's not going to be on the test, it's good to actually know what answers are here and go through them, okay? Um, so, which one do you think? Evidence for the unconscious mind comes from all these except. Hypnosis. Did Sigma Freud use hypnosis? He did. This was we slipped of the tongue and humor, and we talked about slips of the tongue before, right? And that's the id, right? In the back of the head, um, where... You would end up slipping up and saying something you know you shouldn't say because it wasn't morally right. And it slipped right on past the thought process and came right out your mouth. So we know it's not the slips of the tongue and humor. Dreams, that's part of the unconscious, right? Because at that mind, you're at that time you're unconscious in the sense because you're dreaming. So subjective use of distress skill. Let's click on that. Okay. So this is by Wolf that we talked about. Uh, where he talked about systematic desensitization, um, and he used the set scale to create a process of understanding one's anxiety from zero to 100. Okay. All right, number 20. In a counseling session, a counselor asks a patient to recall what transpired three months ago to trigger her depression. There was a silence for about two and a half minutes. The client then began to remember. This exchange most likely illustrates the function of the what? Come on now, we just talked about that. Is it the ego ideal? No. The conscious mind, that's not the term. Unconscious mind, definitely not, because what's in the unconscious mind is repressed and it's very hard to just on like be able to access it hours later, right? Repression. Um, repressed memories is a form of defense mechanism when you have trauma. And so it's going to be buried, buried, buried down because you're not going to even know it's there. So we're going to go with pre-conscious, right? Because it's like pre-conscious, like pre before it gets to the to the, to the the front of your mind. You're like, oh, yeah, I remember, right? Okay. It's the action before the actual thought. The action before the actual, okay. The action before the actual thought. Okay. Right. Unconscious processes which serves to minimize anxiety and protect itself from severe id or superego demands are called what? And we just kind of like talked about this, so it's all coming together, and I love how that is going. Okay, so slip of the tongue. Is that a um, unconscious process which serves to minimize anxiety? No, because if I if I slip up and I say something about my friend's dress being horrible, that's not saving me. I'm going to probably get yelled at. So it wouldn't be that. It's going to make my anxiety worse. Ego defense mechanism? Um, quite possibly, yes. Would it be the id defense process? The id does not have not one defense. If anything, the id is, doesn't care. Letting dream material. We're not talking about manifestations or manifest. We're not talking about that. So that, that won't be it. So we're going to go with ego defense mechanism. So imagine if you experience some kind of trauma and your ego, which is the representative that everyone sees, it's in the conscious, pushes any kind of thing tragic all the way to the back, to the end and the unconscious. Okay? And that's how the mind defends itself. Most theorists, I mean, most therapists agree that ego defense mechanism deny, distort reality. Rationalization, compensation, repression, projection, reaction, formation, identification, introduction, uh, denial, displacement, and ego, or our ego defense mechanism. According to Freudians, the most important defense mechanism is what? what? Which one does he talk about all the time? 
Reaction formation, no. But reaction formation is doing something to yourself that you want to do to someone else. So maybe I, uh, you know, I would get really mad and instead of hitting someone that I'm mad about and they're in front of my face, I'll hit a wall. Even though I really wanted to hit them. The now would be just like to say it never existed, to act like you don't know anything, you know. Sublimation is a substitute. If you think of sub, you think of substitute one behavior for something that's morally more accepted. So maybe if I want to be a boxer, well, actually, if I don't want to be a boxer yet, maybe if I like to fight a lot and I'm like, okay, I'm going to go to jail. So I need to do something that's more morally acceptable. So how about I just be an MMA fighter or a boxer? So I'm going to substitute the morally wrong behavior for something that's morally right, but I can still do what I want to do. Okay. So we're going to do repress, right? We talked about the repression. The e ego is going to take that and repress it all the way back to the end in the unconscious, where it's going to probably take some time for you to ever even recall it. It won't take a couple of days, okay? It'll take a lot more. Suppression differs from repression in that. And we just talked about this, right? Suppression, well, let's go back to repression. Repression is when you push it back and you have no control of it, right? It just goes to the back. Your body's defense mechanism kicks in, right? That's how some people have memory loss about their childhood. They don't know exactly what happened. It's hard for them to recall. They know something terrible happened, but they can't remember what that is. So oppression, in this sense, it is going to be um, where I can suppress my anger and I'm doing it intentionally and I have control over it. It's in the conscious mind. So maybe someone made me mad and cut me off and I'm like, oh, but I'm, I'm trying to be a better person. So I suppress how I feel. Okay. So suppression different, differs from repression in that repression is automatic and voluntary. Remember, we talked about how repression is just like, poof, you don't even know what happened, okay? An aggressive male who becomes a professional boxer because he's sadistic, it's displaying what? We just talked about this, right? It's not suppression, right? It's not suppression how he feels. He's actually still doing what he feels. Rationalization, he's not rationalizing anything to make it make sense. Sublimation, quite, yes. Displacement, is he being displaced? No. He's still doing something. He's not like out of where he originally was. So it's going to be sublimation because we're substituting an aggressive male to become a boxer so he can take all that aggression and put it towards something they say positive, I guess, you know? It's better than going out and being aggressive and harming other people um, in that kind of way, okay? So we are going to go with sublimation. Okay. Last question of the night, or wherever you are, day, evening, afternoon. An advertising psychologist search secretly embeds the word sex into a newspaper ad in, which intends to advertise his center's chemical dependency program. This is a practice of. So this person just put sex into the newspaper of an ad for his chemical dependency program. Is he sublimation? Is he sublimating sex for something else? Mm -mm. Repression? Is it in the unconscious? Mm -mm, right? All right. So is it introduction where you're searching within yourself and you're getting that insight? No. So it's going to be all the above because that person just being weird. Okay. <laughs> all right. So we are going to stop at 25. I hope this video has been very informative. I hope you've learned a couple of things. Um, please let me know in the section, like, what have you learned from this video? I really, 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 really value your feedback just so I can know how it's going, any suggestions, things I can change, things I can make better. Um, so thank you. Um, and I hope you have a great night. And if you like the content, make sure you like and subscribe. Don't forget to do that. Um, and I appreciate it and have a great, amazing night. Thank you.